Oh, Foot Clan Week 1 is nearly in the books. We go through all the studs and duds, all the gooses, all the overreactions, all the madness. Make sure you click this button, subscribe to the channel. You don't want to miss a minute. Here we go. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Monday, September 11th, the fantasy footballers back with you. Take a deep breath. Barely. (laughs) Take a deep breath. And freak out. Oh, that was an interesting week one. So much to talk about. I feel like we could discuss it for hours, to be honest. This could easily be a seven-hour show recapping week one, all the fun, awesome things, all the surprises, and mostly (laughs) all the duds. Uh, as illustrated by the touchdown scoring in opening week. Yeah, right now we're sitting at 59 touchdowns. Last year it was 73. The year before is 88 in terms of week one. Uh, Rich Rebar put that out. And, you know, you definitely felt it. Uh, I'm going to need the NFL Rules Committee to get on this. Uh, they're we trying. Need to, we need to change. Uh, we, need, we need to react. No more defense. It's not Immediately. Just Ten. Two- Ten guys on defense. Yeah. 59 touchdowns is fine if they don't go to Justice Hill and Tyler Algier. Hey, hey. I warned you about Tyler Algier. Don't point at me. I'm I'm redirecting your mirror point over to this guy. No, no, no. No, no. Bijan's going to be fantastic. Yes. And it it was not a warning about Tyler Algier. I was just saying, like, brought him up in the sleeper show of, like, of course. What if. We've been talking about in the last. What if the running back pie is just. The entirety of the team. Yeah. Yeah, that's – I mean, we're going to talk about them. Most of the reactions to the weekend, 95% of the reactions were to the bad. Yeah. Which is how it works. I mean, expectations are built for month after month after month. I put a tweet out really early in the morning basically saying, look, week one is the hardest because you have tremendous amounts of turnover and personnel on these rosters, head coaches, coordinators – quarterbacks, rookies, all of that hits in week one, and you learn, and then you adjust. I mean, all of our in-season tools from jointhefoot.com gather data for two to three weeks before it breaks out the stream finder. And it's like, it's like the Megazord. But that does not mean that you can't react of to course. week one because I think there are there are some things that are worthy of reactions, and then there are some things that you can just probably not worry about. But uh, we did throw out the Monday Punday request. Ninety, I'm not even gonna say ninety five percent. Ninety nine point nine percent with a Monday Punday bad and games. Un- honestly, I I understand it because like the the highs were incredible this week. Like you had some players who it was it was awesome, but then there was just it it wasn't just oh my my stud had a down game. No, it was. My stud gave me zero points. So let, let's jump in. Here are some of the favorite Monday Punday submissions from you, the mm. Foot Clan, over on Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers or Twitter at the FF Ballers. Uh, I'll just take care of the bangles here at the <laughs> yeah, top. Run yeah. through it. We've got lots of them, but uh, how about No Burrow, mm-hmm. T Hidden? Yeah. I like okay. that I one. Mind it. And Jamar Waste. As someone that played against a Burrow. <laughs> yeah. Waste stack. Yes, you did. I was pretty happy with that Browns defensive performance. You had uh, Joe Money, Joe Problems as well because <laughs> he just got paid. And then, of course, our show, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't include P. Higgins. Well, well right. Yes. I mean, yes. Pete all over the place. So, uh, Mike, how you feeling about yeah. uh, fake London? Oh, mm. not good. <laughs> oh, no. Not good. Not good. We got how many times did they throw the ball? Uh, 18. 18. 18 times, four Sheesh. total targets to London and Pitts combined. They won the game going away? By two touchdowns, All yeah. Right. Don't worry, though. 
I'm told by a source in the room that Drake London doesn't care. That would be his head coach <laughs> who mentioned Ritter had more receptions than Drake London. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, did you forget about that? I did. How do you feel about uh, you two, uh, my oh, uh, resident, no. my resident um, Ravens truthers? Yeah. How do you feel about Lame Mar Jackson? Uh, I think that's a good pun. I uh, I think he was Lame Mar Jackson. Yeah, and this it, week we were. To me, I'm just saying to me, it looked like he needed Mark Andrews pretty mm -hmm. bad. Well, he won't have uh, J.K. Yeah. Sobbins. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. Or I.R. Dobbins. I.R. Dobbins. Uh, oh. J.K.1.L. I mean, this was... And that's a big L. Mike, we have to talk about it later or we talk about it now? Uh, let's get through all this. and then I we'll... just had to hit the new sad yeah, music. no. It is good. We will we will get there because it is. What else do we have on sad. the on the bad puns? I, I like starving Mims. Oh, <laughs> and uh, fa facade white. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that's good. And also, this one shocked Not the first me. time you saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, this one shocked me in the game. I kept saying, "Where is he? Is he is he out there?" Uh, Dallas, go eat dirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that was the the craziest part of week one. And again. Welcome to the table, all of you who, oh who are bemoaning goodness. week one performances. I I saw on Twitter the constant flurry of, is this guy hurt? Yeah. Did I miss something or are they out there? This is the Cam Faker situation. He uh, he led all tight ends in percentage Goddard. of routes. Yeah. Goddard, uh, go eat dirt did. 95% oh, of the team's routes. So there was some good, though. Yes, like, there was. Stairway to Evans. You're my guy. Congrats. Yeah, thank goodness for that. I gave you a high five after Mike Evans touched it shook the room. I have never – my hand has not recovered. It was literally the hardest high five I've ever experienced in my life. I told Mike afterwards when you were in the kitchen, <laughs> this is like two minutes later, I was like, I feel like he hit me with a frying pan. Yeah. <laughs> His, the hand was trembling. It's still burning. I, know, I hit it so hard. Foot Clan, we give a crap, yeah. all right? Oh, yeah. When uh, Mike Evans delivers for you, that was my – Pinnacle moment of the day. Uh, here's one that I didn't enjoy because I, I had a really good weekend. Um, uh, I thought I was going to win everywhere. And then there were a couple times where I went up against the Dallas Weefens. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, sweet, sweet mercy. Boston Eckler. Yeah, Haven't seen that one before. Yeah. <laughs> this is Puka, my favorite. Puka in the Cooper Cup Jr. <laughs> yes. Puka in the Cooper Cup Junior, <laughs> and then uh, uh, why not his running mate Tutu Didwell, hey, which is right. a, which is yeah, a yeah. first, yeah. Romeo Dubs, yeah, baby, rolling on two, and uh, Tyreek Hallelujah. I like that one. Not bad. Oh, uh, so as I was saying, I went into uh, the the afternoon feeling real good, real good about sweeping my leagues, and um, then Andy, you had Tua. Go yeah. ham on me, and so now I will probably lose to you. And in the listener league where we were dominant, we, we ran into Tyreek Hill and Dallas defense. And mm. if you had both of those, let me just say this. If you had both of those and you lost. Incredible. That's some great work. Yeah. The Dallas defense performance was one of the greatest ever seen, ever witnessed. And it never stopped. No. The backups were just destroying them. It, it felt like a divisional game, like in a non-divisional game, maybe that stops. Maybe they slow it down. Right. But the divisional game, it's like, let's send a message that you don't even – you should be relegated to another league. They kept Daniel Jones out so long that, like, in the game, it was like, what are you doing? His offensive line hates him. They're just like, go get him. Trying to work through some stuff. All right. I did want to throw a quick question in there before we get into piles of news and all the studs and all the duds of today's – on today's show. The quick question is, look, we, we have been here before, overreactions to week one, not advisable in general. Proper reactions to a handful of things, that's what we should be doing. Is there one of the overreactions out there that you think is worth it? Like we had, uh, just to run through a few, the Bengals, the Bears, and the Steelers, and the Giants looked outmatched. Yeah, putrid. Absolutely disgusting. And then you had all the goose performances, the T. Higgins and Goddard and Drake London. Is there a overreaction that you think is worth it? Yeah. Yeah, there's one that I, <laughs> I think you're not overreacting to for me. I think it is just you need to react to it, and that is Cameron. Mm. 
I, I Cameron Reigns because uh, he is the backup running back for the Los Angeles Chargers. He got it, the start. It seems that way. He was out there for like the whole first drive or two drives, it seemed like. And then all of a sudden, they put Kyron Williams in. He got the goal line. It was like, oh, he got the touchdown. That's a shame. Cam Akers should have got that. And Cam Akers got a touchdown a little while later in his own right. He was still mixed in. But if you look at the carry counts, the snaps, the utilization, the value, this is not I think what he had more hoped. carries than Kyron Williams. Yeah, but Kyron he, he was twenty two for twenty nine. Yeah, but it it was that showed up Garbage at the end time. of the game. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. that's a, a So he went from Cam to Cameron. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. I want to give him Ron now. Oh, we're just, just Ron. Just Ron. Oh, He's just Ron. Man. Ron Akers. Oh, oh man. man. <laughs> See? That dude sells insurance. Ron Akers is done. He's toast. So that's your uh, overreaction that's going to stick. I mean, is Yeah, he scored a touchdown, So if and, and he had the carry count. So if you can sell him for something and, and make someone believe on a decent uh, performance, I'm I'm in on cap. Uh, I Get something for him. I you picked up. Captain Ron. I was going <laughs> to say capitalizing Go on him. Sweet but Captain Kurt, Ron. Kurt Russell reference. I picked up Kyron Williams. 30 seconds before kickoff. Yeah, I did not have a spot. It's one of those things that we always say to do, which is if you have a roster spot or somebody – basically what happens is, is in your league, players will get put on – they'll be – like for me, it was Devon A. Chain. He was a healthy scratch, gets moved out. I pop him onto IR, and then I go shoot for a backup Absolutely. that you think can compete. I mean, if it was Justice Hill for you, congratulations maybe, or Gus Edwards or – Kyron Williams was was my choice, and now maybe he's a player. Yeah, I picked up Damian Harris, and um, so now I got to root against uh, <laughs> Cook. James Cook. I am Mike. I'll let you go first. Sure. The, the it's I think it's still going to take some time, uh, but it it got the pun, and it is facade white. It, like the entire dude sucks. The entire argument for drafting Rashad White was volume. And a he's a, he's a good pass catching running back, but he's also not in the running back dead zone. Like this wasn't a you had to just send one of your fourth or fifth round picks over for Rashad White, miss, missing out on a a great wide receiver, or maybe you wanted to draft a tight end, even though Darren Waller and the Giants uh, crapped the bed last night. But that's one that I will really be paying attention to over the next few weeks. Sean Tucker was a name that we had mentioned that was building up some momentum and some steam, went from an undrafted free agent to making the 53 to being named the number two uh, running back on the team. And this was not a, a hard matchup. <laughs> like Rashad White was not up against a, a killer defense this past weekend. He got all the work. Like He had 54 snaps. Sean Tucker only had 10. But Rashad White went 17 for 39 on the ground. And that is unbelievably bad. I, do, I wonder if uh, I wonder what it was because they won the ball game, and Sean Tucker was five for fifteen, so he didn't he didn't flash. But there's going to be opportunity. I mean, that's three a carry, better than Rashad yeah. White. Yeah. The, the the point being, I it, it could be a matter of time before Rashad White loses massive opportunity. And uh, I I noticed a stark absence of Steelers fans in my Twitter timeline this weekend. <laughs> oh, man. I didn't see all of the preseason parades. The that heroes I had. of preseason. I, I never uh, I never saw any of them oh, speak man. up. Now, and you guess what? Here, I got a, I got a public service announcement for um, for the Steelers. You're done. Oh, oh whoa, come on. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was the 49ers. <laughs> That's one of the best defenses well, in he, the league. He, yeah, I agree. I agree. And I'm being a little bit facetious. But the truth is, Kenny Pickett, without Deontay Johnson now, yeah, that's yeah. a problem. You you want you want me to sit here and tell you that the Steelers are on the way to the playoffs with Allen Robinson leading the way? Because I'm not going to do I it. I think he had he had 50 plus yards. He, it was better than George Pickens. Yeah, <laughs> he had eight targets. <laughs> and no, I'm not I'm not going to sit here and tell you that that he looked good. Kenny Pickett didn't look good. Pickett's the, Pickett's passes were off. He was he pl he played very poorly. He was he, flustered. He was flustered in the pocket and next week he's taking on the Cleveland Browns um and that was the team that just put a shellacking on Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Um you know, that they, they'll be the the home team the Steelers will be, so maybe 
Cleveland doesn't travel as well, but I don't expect good things next week. 49ers travel pretty well. Yeah, yeah they do. Yeah. yeah, the 49ers. So that's one of the things where I, I struggle. I watch a game like that, and I say, which one is the real truth? If it, Obviously, it's, it's a little bit of both. Yes. But which one is the heavier truth? That the Steelers are putrid offensively, uh, and that when we said you couldn't be worse than last year, we was wrong? <laughs> or the 49ers defense is just picking up right where it left off and they are dominant and everyone that they face is going to have their worst or, or you know, bottom three type performance well, of the season. It's not just that the, the 49ers defense is for real. It's that the 49ers offense with Brock Purdy is for real and that just – He's the, if they can get their offense going and then they put their defense in rested, to a, a yeah. you put them into a a plus to hunt, situation hunt, hunt and kill mode exactly of where you just unleash un, unleash the 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 pass rush and it's going to be a very good recipe for the that, 49ers that's what happened for the Cowboys last night if you watched yes. the first drive of the game when the Giants had the ball they just ran down the throats of the Cowboys but then a couple special teams touchdowns later you know some some quick uh special teams of defense touchdowns all of a sudden you're up and now it's like well you're not running the ball anymore yeah. you need to pass and check out what we can do with our pass rush <laughs> yeah you're right and and i would imagine every steelers fan every Bengals fan every giants fan is blaming the defense that they played against for their offensive woes and and uh they'll certainly be better than they were this week the bears scared the crap out of me that's fair um 37 passes for Justin Fields. That is 10 of them, or I'm sorry, three of them went over 10 yards in the air. So oh, that wasn't only, good either. And only two of them went to DJ Moore. No, not good. What are we doing? Well, we got studs and duds. We'll talk all about it. Let's jump into the news first. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Prior to kick off, the Rams placed Cooper Cup on IR. That means that that first game will count towards his four mandatory minimum games missed. Everybody came out and said, oh, the the tank job for Callum Williams. It begins for the Rams. Yeah. Then they went it out began. and shellacked. It began for Arizona. The Seahawks. <laughs> uh, J.K. Dobbins. Okay, here we can go. Can I hit the button yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, you definitely can. This is, uh, this is the worst. This is the freaking worst. Because well, make the news announcement So, first. J.K. Dobbins is out for the year with a torn Achilles. J.K. Dobbins was looking good. He was getting opportunities. He had uh, he had a touchdown. He had three targets before going down to the, the season-ending injury. He gets down to the goal line where he gets, yeah, yes. gets injured, and then the next, I think it was the two plays later, yep. rushing touchdown for Justice Hill. And, yeah, and then there was multiple rushing touchdowns that – would, like J.K. Dobbins was dominating the backfield. This yeah. wasn't a a split. It was J.K. Dobbins is going to be our dude, and he is. This is the final year of his rookie contract. This is his second season-ending injury in two of four years, and it's an Achilles injury. So this is. It's not necessarily like you look at it. Oh well, it's the end because we've Cameron Akers came back. Deontay Foreman came back. I'm saying they became – like, Foreman is a relevant They're football still player. still in the I, NFL. I was only laughing at Cameron because – Oh, yeah. Ron? Yeah. yeah. But the point is, Dobbins does not have a contract. Yeah. and His, his career is over. His and career is over. He might get veteran minimum. So that's what a team will have yeah. to do is give him a one-year veteran minimum knowing we're probably just rehabbing you and hoping that we can rebuild your your Achilles to the and get you I mean, back it's, to it's, some of what you were. It's the the odds of J.K. Dobbins ever being started in your fantasy lineup the rest of your life is yeah extremely low. Yeah, the, I mean the best case scenario is he ends up signing a deal in in two years and getting scratched on game day like Rashad Penny. The mm -hmm. the human element of the Dobbins injury is just is unbelievably catastrophic and for fantasy football, which that's what our show is about. It's also catastrophic. You, It looked like you were going to have a steal of a running back where you drafted him, but now we now we get to talk about Gus Edwards and Justice Hill. Yeah, tomorrow's waiver wire show. We'll kind of order those guys, tell you what to think of who's behind them. But this, what about this Melvin? You ready for Melvin? I'm, I'm also ready for the possibility of Kareem Hunt. Yeah, I mean this or this, Fournette. This offense, it with Dobbins getting hurt again, which has been the recipe for Dobbins. 
and Andrew's getting hurt again. Uh, there was one shining star. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait. Do you want to get to the- No, we'll oh. talk about him later. Okay. You can stop okay. and smell that mm. later. Oh. <laughs> All right, we've got hamstring injuries. Yo, Deontay Johnson exited the game with a right hamstring injury, and let me tell you, <sighs> the way he grabbed his hamstring was not the, oh, I, I tweaked no. it and I'm, and I'm limping off the field. It was the, you might not see me for six to eight weeks. Yeah, this was, uh, I felt my hamstring rip off the bone type of uh, agonizing pain from just visually. Obviously, yes. we, we don't know. Um but maybe, he went maybe down. he's just a giant baby. <laughs> maybe, but he went he's down. He's back next week. He went down in a heap, grabbing the the hamstring. Like in to contrast, Aaron Jones, mm -hmm. off of a monster fantasy day. Aaron Jones, here we are, uh, a thirty five yard touchdown, and he grabbed at the back. I think of his his maybe his left hamstring, yep. but you saw him pretty much as he entered the end zone go ay, and he was seen then on the sideline. The, the trainers were trying to stretch it out. We don't have an update yet, but he did not go back into the game. He, granted, the Packers were uh, doing a uh, com completing a beatdown of the Chicago Bears, but that's we will be on watch for Aaron Jones' hamstring. There are two players that I've seen injure themselves on touchdowns frequently. Aaron Jones seems to get to a speed that is not acceptable to his body. Sure. And Mike Evans has caught a lot of long yeah, yeah, touchdown yeah. passes and grabbed body parts while he's going into the end zone. Greg Dulcich, out with a leg injury, getting an MRI today. Mike, the trout oh. man may yeah. be I will here. Not, I will not lap uh, Greg Dulcich getting hurt. That sucks. But uh, Troutman was, in fact, the starter. He was running the same garbage route oh, every single time. I don't know what they're doing. With Adam Troutman, there's leaking him out to the flat, and that like, look, Troutman is, he's not beating a guy. One, <laughs> he's not beating a guy one v one. You got to use him up the middle like Dalton Schultz. But Troutman will be an interesting. He could be an interesting pickup. All right, uh, Jacoby Myers, who was having oh, a huge game, oh, monster mercy. game, left with a concussion. A really scary one too. And uh, he's got a history, doesn't he? I don't I think recall. Jacoby has missed some some time i don't recall but as of right now jacoby myers is the wide receiver three in half point scoring nine for 81 and two jacoby myers was he was the the preferred target of jimmy garoppolo yeah because he was closer to the line of <laughs> scrimmage than Devonte adams he's like ah i'm jimmy garoppolo i just take the safe Period. it also helps when you have a player capable like him opposite of where the defense is going to be sure. focusing uh, Jack Conklin, Browns right tackle, tore his ACL and MCL, season-ending surgery. He's done. The, the, I think that's also built into the the negative response was not just looking at your your fantasy score. It was just, when you were watching Sunday morning. It was injury after injury after injury. You had Tyler Lockett leave the game with a concussion. You had Geno Smith leave the game at halftime. Apparently. Oh my yeah. goodness! What was what, what, three? I think it was three total yards in the second half. Was it three for the Seahawks? It might have been. I, don't I know, think it was like, fourteen. I think it ended up around fourteen. It was it? that oh, was really? that was one oh, of the, that was a stat. A I'm part thinking of, of about a minute left yeah. in the game when the, they had three. No, they jumped all the way up to fourteen or something. That was one of the interesting things of how do you react to that game of the Rams who heading into the season on paper you're going well this this defense is not going to be anything special looking at the Seahawks Gino was the most accurate passer last year they had two incredible weapons they added a, a rookie the rookie's going to play this morning and then they were awful so what is is there any truth to gleam from that matchup of are the Rams defense did they figure something out with with the unit or did the Seahawks forget how to play? Well, the Seahawks were were okay in the first half, and I think it was a combination of the Seahawks losing their tackles. So we'll have to watch the the health of their offensive line because that allowed the pass rush of the the Rams to get through. But also the Rams' offense was a big problem for the Seahawks' offense. They just stayed on the field. Puka, baby. Oh, they pukaed all over <laughs> them. <laughs> well, I, the Puka and Tutu, yeah, were two of the seven wide receivers with a hundred plus yards this week. Uh, and and to be to be fair, Seattle looked awful on the on the back end, they which did. we thought they might be better. Uh, so we'll see if that's an overreaction that that holds up. Uh, Evan Hall knocked out with a knee injury, didn't return, and for then the, uh, for the Colts and Deion Jackson looked 
bad, fumbling the ball multiple times. That's right. It will be it will be Zach Moss's job next week. And uh, Jonathan Taylor going to pass the physical, could pass it today, and would be trade talks will heat up. So that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break. Back with the studs. All right, just a reminder, we have a big waiver wire segment coming tomorrow. We've got another Monday or one more football game, the Monday night game between the Bills and the Jets. Very excited about that. A better deliver compared to Sunday yeah, night football. I, I don't know, man. Yeah, it could, it could be a, it oh, could be a think, tough one. I think it's going to be an amazing game. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for doing that. Yeah. Uh, let's get into the studs. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Do you remember the part of the week, Jason, when we had finished Fantasy Faceoff? Mm-hmm. And I had I had put Tua Tungavailoa in there. Mm-hmm. And then you were you were like really shocked that I didn't get Justin Herbert in right, there. Right, because you had $200 left and over. I could have done it. And you could have switched up to Justin Herbert on the other side of the field. I'm happy I didn't. I am sad you didn't. <laughs> yeah, Tua Tungavailoa. 466 passing yards, three touchdowns. Uh, he threw a league high 21 passes of 10 or more yards. Turns, Honestly, turns out speed <laughs> very important to the NFL. It was, you know, we had games like this last year for them when he was healthy, obviously. So fun to watch. I mean, when you see Jalen Waddle, oh boy, <laughs> I'm just there's a lot of chatter in our in in the Slack going on about the. The, the back wall graphic, it is me. Congrats which, on your body, Mike. Which this is, I took that picture last night. Did you? Wow. Yeah, yep. Yeah, that was me flexing with wow. me and, me you and Zay Flowers. You flexed those tattoos right <laughs> off, man. Yeah, well, Impressive. I, I actually paint my tattoos on every day. Oh, wow. wow. But that is really my body. Okay, okay. yeah. Good Sorry for the listeners out there. Uh, there's a Congrats not for safe not for work seeing it. picture of Mike up on the wall. Uh, our graphics team decided to go with what are the people naked in the back Mike. doing? Just they're just pointing at you. Yeah. You just have a crowd. <laughs> it looks like Fight at Club body. hanging out. Um, look, it is a great and fun offense to watch. It'll be a test next week. They had to go on the road against the Chargers. It was a high over under. Yes, you're going on the road next week, and then you play New England. Then you go against Denver. Then you go against Buffalo on the road. That's not very fair to these Dolphins sending them on the road three out of four weeks. But what a performance. And you really, at some point in time, you can't stop Tyreek Hill. You can't stop Jalen Waddle. They're going to be okay. And they had they had a lot of valuable contributions worth mentioning for Tua's stability, which is that Braxton Berrios is a better three than they've had in a long time. Sure. Durham Smythe. <laughs> the, the OGs I mean, everywhere. He was great. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes. Yeah, you thought you could get away with it. You just said... He is great, but you muted yourself. He is great. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, it's Monday. Yeah, yeah, week but, one. Sorry. But, but it also in that, I mean, the, the matchup was great. That's why Tua was a, a highlight. He was the start of the week because of the Chargers secondary. Having said that, some of, like, a lot of throws when I was watching Tua last year, it was underthrowing Tyreek Hill mm -hmm. and then him being hero ball figuring it out to a some of these throws were unbelievable just pinpoint dropping the ball so if Tua has leveled up with this offense it's going to it's going to be amazing Mac Jones was 35 for 54 against the Philadelphia Eagles 316 and three just wasn't clutch enough he had two drives at the end of the game to win it and couldn't get it done there was a defensive score for the Eagles if you didn't watch that game the the Eagles got an interception which wasn't Mac Jones's fault hit the receiver in the hands popped up uh, and uh, Darius Slay housed it um, but if you watch the rest of the game that if it really felt like the Patriots beat the Eagles um, from an expectation standpoint if if, if that kind of uh, fluky pick, pick six play didn't happen I, I think we might be thinking a little differently about the the Patriots and and the quality of their team I agree. Jordan Love, 
Jordan Love was hey. great. Didn't, didn't even have Christian Watson. 15 for 27, 245 hey. and three. He's got Dobbs. We should have known. Almost All they a, do is they start Hall of Fame well, first ballot quarterbacks. He looked he looked very uh, good against the Bears. In rhythm. <laughs> he looked very in rhythm. Yeah. Anthony Richardson, great debut. He did. Yeah. 24 for 37, 223 and one. Which he did leave the game at the end. I uh, believe it was a knee injury. The report I'm seeing, though, is they're gonna, they say he will be fine. Yeah, he looked. He looked like he was going to be all right. Uh, I had thought it was a concussion at first. Yeah, I mean, it. I don't even understand on that play how it was a knee problem. It, it he got smashed in the helmet, and uh, but yeah, forty rushing yards, another rushing touchdown, great for fantasy. I mean, if he's getting off to this quick a start, it's unbelievable. Yeah, Deshaun Watson ended up uh, in the five for forty-five and a touchdown on the ground, another touchdown through the air on one hundred and fifty-four yards. This game was pretty rainy. It was it just was ask gross. Joe Burrow's tiny hands. Oh. <laughs> Uh, His hands, <laughs> small I know. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, let's get some jewel in there. Not yours. Uh, Deshaun Watson looked okay. Um, the, yeah, it was a dominating performance by the defense, but he did get enough done on offense to to make it a route. And um, yeah. what, what you really I'm optimistic. Want, yeah, what you really want to see from Deshaun Watson is I I, I saw some bad throws in mm -hmm. this game where I was like, oh man, and I saw enough of them where I was worried, but he ran the ball. If you run the ball, you can be an average. You can be a below average passer. For, passer. Yeah, yeah. And for fantasy football, you're still going to come through. And this was in the rain, so maybe you know some of those passes weren't his fault. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the stud running backs. I threw a few Aaron Jones uh, DFS lineups in about 15 minutes before game time, and uh, I didn't win the million though. But no. he had a heck of a day. Two touchdowns was uh, explosive. The contrast between him and A.J. Dillon on mm, the ground sure. was – it was definitely a starter versus backup. Let's put it that way. But he did hurt his hamstring. They get Atlanta next week, then New Orleans. But Aaron Jones, great debut. Two for 86 through the air, nine for 41 on the ground. Can't really do more with 11 yeah, don't, opportunities. Don't love the volume. Don't love that he already has a hamstring injury. Austin Eckler, Joshua Kelly. They massacred the Miami defensive line. Josh Kelly is an interesting name because he had the same amount of carries as Eckler, which I would have found ridiculous, except every time they handed him the football, looked. he was carving up the defense the same way Eckler was. He looked very good. Uh, so it was a, it was a true 50-50 uh, in terms of carries. The the uh, And this is – I'll just mention this in passing because there's no reports on it. But when Jason and I were watching, there was a sequence of plays where Austin Eckler, after a, a mm -hmm. carry, looked – he gave the body language of the stand-up, like something is not great. He was in on the very next play. But as he was lining up, something weird was going on. And then he left the field for – He limped off. He, field. Yeah, he limped off the field, and there was a, a whole bunch of Joshua Kelly uh, attempts after that. So, again, I've not seen – any reports about it was just watching the game and and noticed this. So just keep keep an ear out. Oh, I noticed. I've got two running backs on my roster. Yeah. It was J.K. Dobbins and Austin Eckler, so yeah. I was terrified for about 10 minutes. Eckler, 16 for 117 and 1 in five targets for 4 for 47 through the air. Does this mean that the new Kellen Moore system is just great for running backs, or does this mean target Miami Dolphins' rush defense as they got gashed by whoever had the ball? Perhaps both. Maybe. Christian McCaffrey. Oh, he's still good. Great game. 22 for 152 and one on the road. Five targets. That Play, was, played all but 10 49ers offensive snaps. Which is surprising. We're going to limit his snaps. <laughs> yeah. We, they, we, Get out of here. They were, Unleash the beast. They were dominating the yep. Steelers. And I, I assume the second half would be all Elijah Moore. I think Elijah Moore. Or, uh, 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 Elijah Mitchell. Mitchell. I thought that the missile might have a lot of work. I think he had like two carries. This was all Christian McCaffrey. And the coolest thing is when I was watching the game and you'd watch Christian McCaffrey just do a run, you can go, oh, yeah, he's really good. Oh, he's just, I don't know if you guys have seen this. If you've never watched Christian McCaffrey, dude's pretty good. He's yep. very good. And the team, the scheme for the runs was incredible. And the team was all in on blocking. It, so the, the McCaffrey – Huge touchdown run. If you missed the highlight, the actual highlight is Brandon Ayuk hit getting a block, then getting out in front of Christian McCaffrey and 
truck sticking. He someone. sent somebody into another uh, no, un- universe. Yes, and that's what that's what opened it up for McCaffrey to score. Uh, you got to remember McCaffrey. What this is his first full off season yeah. and, mm-hmm. and opportunity to get integrated into the system, and yep. that is the most impressive thing. They were blowing them out, and he was getting all the reps. So you got to remember, if you play Elijah Mitchell, this is one of the things the 49ers, If you play him, he's going to get hurt. Yeah. So you got to leave probably. him off the field. Yeah. Tyler Algier, two touchdowns. Yeah, people, baby. People want to hear about the Tyler Algier, Bijan Robinson situation. Bijan had ten carries. Algier had fifteen. Uh, Bijan was ten for fifty-six. He had six targets, six for twenty-seven, and a touchdown. Uh, that would be five more targets than Drake London had. That would be thirty-five percent of the total targets. Yeah, I mean the number, the total number is good. Six, six targets is great. And and Robinson was the snap leader for the first three quarters. So that also factors in. So, yeah, both guys are going to be involved, though. People mm, yeah. want to know, can I play Tyler Algier? Yes. You yeah. Can, you can flex him because there's a decent chance he's going to score some touchdowns this year and have opportunities. And Bijan, you know, much like Jameer Gibbs, there's going to be an element of easing them into the NFL game, not putting too much on them at first. And you're going to have some monstrous, monstrous Bijan games. This Algier's ceiling isn't as high as Bijan's. No, no, it's not. But, I mean, they, there were multiple times, both of the rushing touchdowns that Tyler Algier got, they got down near the goal line, and they're like, let's use Algier, and, and that's fine. Like, I'm Mr. Bijan. Bijan had a great game. He's going to continue to, and both of these players will be absolutely fine to start on a weekly basis. Um, obviously, Bijan will have the better season-long performance, but I think Algier might be the better value for where you ended up drafting these and and you know if I had to make one you know overreaction that you're going to stick with I I think I think Atlanta wins this division I think they're going to be a really good team and they're they're going to just run the ball they are all day ask me how much Kyle Pitts I have <laughs> how, how much Kyle Pitts none you have? ask me about Drake London go do you, it you got any uh Drake London no, over there none no? okay yeah they threw it 18 times they won by two touchdowns if Mr. Mustache, Arthur Smith, could do this every week. I've got a plan. I mean, his comments tell you everything you need to know. This is how you want to win the game, Atlanta. Have you watched Desmond Ritter? I would want to throw it less than yeah. 18 times. Now, the next couple weeks, though, they play Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Green Bay looked good, so that might not be as easy a matchup where you can be up two scores and not throw the ball. Then they play against Detroit, whose offense is mm. great. They just beat mm. the Chiefs. They might have to throw the ball a little bit more. Then they play against Jacksonville and the Jaguars, who, you know, if if you're not up 14 points, you would think uh, maybe you have to throw the ball more. But I want to caution you on that because Arthur would say, no, I don't. <laughs> Watch me. Watch I, me. We're down I, two scores. I don't and I won't. To hand that ball off. Yeah, his quote exactly was, let the fantasy guys worry about that. <laughs> Speaking of Drake London's production, we've got things to clean up. We don't care. Drake London doesn't care. All we care about is 1-0. and And the truth is that's true. Yeah, I, that's, I, that's true. true. I think the Drake London doesn't care part is untrue. Uh, no, I, I, I mean, I'm going to give him the credit. I think yeah. it's given Drake London credit to say he doesn't care. Hundred percent. They want the W. Mike cares. Uh, no, no, I, I definitely. I'm saying when Drake London is eventually going for a contract extension, he's going to care what his production looks like. Yeah, maybe in some minor way, thinking long ahead to that day. But I think he's pretty happy about yesterday. Tony Pollard, 14 for oh 70 gosh. and two touchdowns. He. <laughs> is going to be so good. Travis Etienne, 18 for 77 and a touchdown. Yeah. Five targets, five catches, 27 yards through the air, 80% of snaps, 15.6% target share. That is a career high for Travis Etienne. Kansas City next week, fire him up. Travis Etienne looked great. You did have the situation where uh, you, you had the tank in for some goal line action yeah, he got a touchdown yep. himself uh but this is travis Etienne's backfield for a while um where he's going to dominate in, in in the running and passing game kyron williams 15 for 52 two touchdowns looked way better than cam Akers. yeah just between the tackles he was getting extra yards cam Akers, uh I, I don't know how we can get all the way back to where we were in the middle of last year with the comments that mcveigh has made but he's a liar. We know that. Yeah. Uh, this is a good friend of the show, John Daigle, had a, a tweet that really points out when I said I was worried about Cameron. And you say, well, you know, Cameron 
by the end of the game looks like he was he was even and this is why you can you're you can capitalize and sell uh Ron uh but uh Kyron Williams outtouched Cam Akers 14 to 11 until the Rams took a 24 to 13 lead and then Akers recorded 11 touches to Kyron's one over the last 9 minutes of the fourth quarter but Williams ran 30% of routes or ran 73 or 30 routes 73% to Akers four so the 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 valuable you know, guy that was getting important touches when the game mattered was Kyron Williams. The guy that was running routes was Kyron Williams. But next week, San Francisco. Yep. Good luck. So yeah. Sell, sell Ron now. Brian Robinson and Roshan Johnson. Brian Robinson, I want to mention this. He, if, if you looked at Antonio Gibson, who we'll talk about later, Brian Robinson more than doubled his routes run record as an NFL player. And we should remember the fact that you have a brand new offensive coordinator in Eric Bieniemy there, so you want to start to pick up trends of new coordinators. He was 19 for 59 on the ground. Uh, he only caught one pass, but it was a touchdown. And then, like I said, Gibson was mostly a ghost. Gibson did what Gibson can yeah. not do. Gibson has a fumbling issue over the last several years. He's been benched for it, and he fumbled in that game. He he and still played after the fumble, but that is sparsely. Yeah, it's not great. And then Roshan Johnson ended up with the goal line touchdown. He also had seven targets. If, you need to pay attention to Roshan yes, Johnson. And, and uh, absolutely pay attention. I'm still on Team Khalil Herbert. The, the Roshan Johnson production was garbage time. This was when the game was out of hand. It was the fourth quarter. Khalil and, and Foreman played in front of Roshan Johnson, but he – he looked good on his opportunity. So this is what what you want is can he show that tape to the coaches and say, no, I need to play earlier. Uh, and yeah, you did see some Deontay Foreman on the field earlier mm -hmm. as well. And um, that situation, if that offense is not good, there's going to be some disappointment. DJ Moore, Justin Fields, all those guys. Wide receivers, Tyreek Hill had the highest week one fantasy points since 2009. <laughs> Or sorry, 2019 Sammy Watkins. Oh yeah, we still got the drop someplace With hidden the away. The Lizard King. Yeah, we've got. Oh, we do. Tyreek was cold blooded, man. He he is yeah. uh, unstoppable. Fifteen targets, eleven for two fifteen. Five too few. Over uh yeah over thirty percent of the targets, which is what we've seen him do. I mean, Tyreek Hill will be dominant week in and week out 3,655 receiving yards that's the pace <laughs> <laughs> hey Brandon Ayuk Woo. eight for eight nice. for 129 and two I don't know is that a perfect game I mean that's he a perfect had a game perfect game he had some catches what his second touchdown was really a great throw but also just great body positioning to be able to catch the ball he had he laid down the law on a block that was Christian McCaffrey's mm -hmm. huge run. You watch that run again. Just watch number 11 out there <laughs> laying someone out. Um, he had a great game. Looks awesome. Is obviously uh, going to succeed in this offense. And, man, I mean, maybe is there enough to go around for the San Francisco 49ers? My worry has been, like, with, with Christian McCaffrey and Debo and Ayuk and Kittle. It's like there's not enough volume to go around, but they sure seem to make it work against a good defense. You had big weeks from Calvin Ridley. Yeah. 11 targets, 8 for 101. Christian Kirk was poof, not a part of the offense. The most routes run by this offense was actually Zay Jones. Yeah. Christian Kirk, the, the preseason told the truth, at least through week one, that despite the, the bag of money that he's getting, he's the slot wide receiver and will not be on the field for two wide out sets. 69% of dropbacks Christian Kirk ran a route. That's not nice. No. Michael Pittman, Pity City. Oh, oh baby, where's oh, that drop? Yeah. Build this city. And I need back on. No, I want back in. I want back in. No, 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 no. Yeah, let's fix that. Let's fix that. Yeah. Oh, it's just me. That's okay. Now I now I never asked to come off. That's the problem here. I've been in on Pity. And Andy was like, get me off this graphic. And we went all the way to Mike. I feel like I've been unfairly taken out of the graphic. Andy said, remove me from the graphic. And you remained silent. I said, I like Pittman. Put me back hey, on the graphic, Hey, to be Al. fair. The new graphic is Mike and me. No Andy. I don't want to go down with the city. But I did say he was a great draft value. Uh, yeah, I mean, he... And I was jealous that you picked him up in 
because uh, I believe in Anthony Richardson. Yeah, sure. he looked just, good. But, he got the targets that you want to see. Eleven huge, targets, long got touchdown. A long, yeah, I mean, it was nice to see him not just getting dinks and dunks. Um, so if he's the clear number one for this offense, and he's getting used down the field, he's a talented player. So yeah. I think you just continue to fire him up. All right, you had what I would guess is an outlier a week from Kendrick Bourne, six for sixty-four and two touchdowns. Jacoby Myers, 9 for 81 and two touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs, just 4 for 26, but scored two touchdowns. Yep. He was in he, he Are you was trading him? Snaps. Um, are you trading him with, with Christian Watson eventually coming back? Or are you going to see if – I'm open to trading him, but I'm I'm also very open to, just to let's find out because it was only five targets. I mean, 4 for 26 isn't great, but what if he – is in the reports of the offseason where Jordan Love likes to throw the ball to Romeo Dobbs so that and Dobbs was still limited on snaps because of the hamstring injury I'm uh, again I'm open to trading him but I think with Romeo I'd rather just I'd rather hold on and, and see what happens next week against Atlanta are you moving Jacoby Myers or is are you seeing yeah, to no. be a recommended waiver pickup? Oh really? I would be targeting Myers. Oh, I I meant I, I meant uh, I I interpreted that more as like moving up in your ranks. Like oh. I am moving my opinion on Jacoby Myers. No, if I I would uh I, I believe Jacoby Myers will be heavily involved. Now, he, if he goes in the concussion protocol, he might not be there this week. Um, uh, I'm not going to invest in him. Really? The yeah. way that the targets, I mean, he was well, just the targets to no, I agree. I'm not taking anything away from him as a player and performance, but Denver's defense is is pretty formidable. And you know, I was, I think this was a product of of really uh, some of that pass rush, getting the ball out quickly. And I'm not, I don't think nine for eighty one is going to translate with a concussion into Buffalo. So I, this is one of those guys I'm going to pass on. Yeah, I mean, I we'll we'll talk about him tomorrow uh, about whether or not we uh, go in on him. I I would not pick him up to play him this week because I don't know that he'll be available. All right. Puka Nakua. Oh, oh baby. yes, baby. And Tutu Atwell. Puka Nakua was 15 targets, 10 for 119. Tutu Atwell was 6 for 119. And Van Jefferson just ain't it. No. 15 Down targets. The river. Over 100 yards in your first game as an NFL player means it you was, belong here. It was a sensational opening day. I loved Just his, missed the touchdown uh, down the sideline, too. I loved his film. This is a guy, when when you like a guy and you think, uh, man, I'm, I'm, you know, I wanted him to get drafted higher than he did, but he's got the opportunity, and then he dominates, and you liked him. I'm fully in on, on Puka being legit and real. Okay, we'll see what that translates to on the waiver show tomorrow. Chris Olave, big game. Mike Evans, and then Zay Flowers. Zay, 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 baby. Ten targets, nine for 78. 48% target share. First oh. game. Nine, He's the uh, dude. Wide receiver 19 on the week. Now, it will that will not hold once Mark Andrews comes back because Mark Andrews, I, I believe, still remains the number one target for Lamar Jackson. But this was exactly what we wanted to see he looks fantastic on the field he is twitchy he is fast he is undersized but he has let's say he does look small he but he, he but got he it has, done he has the traits that we want and those traits turned into being the number one wide receiver like Beckham I think only had a handful of catches Bateman was the third man up like Zay Flowers was the dude and they called his number uh you yes. know it, it was sometimes they would they would when they needed yards, it looked like they went to him in the screen game because they're like, we want to go to this jitterbug. The fact that they used him in important situations, I, I'm really bullish on his outlook. Hunter Henry, hey. nice game. He's uh, he's going to be a viable start. Yeah, Could be. he's good. And then Hayden Hurst scored for the Panthers. The Panthers have – they don't have anything at, at the wide receiver position. No. <laughs> They've got one guy. <laughs> Uh, Did you play me, Andy? Did you? <laughs> yeah. For old times. Was I in your lineup? Shake. Please tell me. Please. I told, I told Jason in our in our double flex. Please tell me you played me. I did. I did. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Two catches, 12 yards. I did my best. <laughs> I told Jason this morning, I'm going to be flexing Logan Thomas over him. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me sad. Yeah, well, just go to the retirement home. Uh, honestly, Bryce Young, terrible. 
Bryce Young looked like a, a rookie and um So did Stroud. Yeah, yeah, both did. So and not not good. Is this the uh hey Kyle, is this the tight end top ten? Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Hunter Henry's number one. Hayden Hurst is number two. Uh huh. Donald Ger Parham. No, no, no. Ger yeah. Gerald Everett. No, 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 no. Donald Ger Parham. Ger Ger Gerald, Gerald Everett starting tight end for the Chargers. Nope. He's oh, not in the man. top ten. Mm. Uh, Blake the, Bell, Harrison the Bryant. The process was correct. No, it wasn't because so, I told you Donald Parham was going to do that. So the top five are Hunter Henry, Hayden Hurst, Donald Parham, and Blake Bell. Mm -hmm. Harrison Bryant is next. I oh, can't believe Harrison you left Bryant. him off the I list. I apologize. When you have a superstar like that, you should mention him. Wow. This is the top 10 of, of yesterday or the whole week? I think that's the weekend. That's where, the week. Where was uh, where was Mr. Laporta? Below Musgrave? Yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was uh, tight ends didn't show up this week, guys, in case you were curious. Wow. We, we have one more game for them to do it, but they will not. Dalton Kincaid could be the number one tight end he could. in his first week. Pooped in his big boy pants. Shall we? Shall we? You know what? I don't really appreciate the back wall graphic from for me. This is not me with, a, oh. with a big muscle. No, that's yeah. Me. And that's first that. of all, my hairline. Well, that's you before the show, before you, you do all the, the makeup and stuff. And you put in your false tooth and the toupee. I want everybody to see this. <laughs> I've got hair. So Man, it's right. a nice toupee. The, the, the crew is surprising Honestly, us today. Honestly, what's amazing with that picture of me is it looks a lot better than these stat lines from Joe Burrow. Lamar oh, Jackson, man. Justin Fields. This this was the, bad. The I, I don't know if you guys know, put this together, but I believe basically every quarterback who got paid yes. was off. I mean, yes. I think Herbert had a, an okay game, but Burrow, Lamar, Hurts, hmm. Geno. I mean, the guys who got the bag <laughs> taking week one off, yeah, huh? Yeah, they did. Let me let me ask you about an observation I made in the Philly game. And whether you believe it to be maybe just getting the jitters out of the way or what. Did you notice Jalen Hurts and the way he was going down? No. So Jalen Hurts. Going down early before contact. Very, very early. I did notice. In his, you did. Yeah. Yes. Very, very early in the scrambles. And I couldn't help but think that investment that they made. On Jalen Hurts, obviously you want to use his strengths, but to me he was going down extremely early in his scrambles, not fighting for yards, not trying to break a big play, just kind of conceding the tackle, which I'm I'm not saying that that's dumb, but it could hurt the production in the running game. Uh, people were asking, like, where was the rushing quarterbacks this week? Mm -hmm. I mean, Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson was 6 for 38. He only had 169 yards passing again. And uh But I mean, to be fair to Lamar, that's on 17 completions where Jalen Hurts had 170 and it took 22 for him to get there. So I I still think that there's better days ahead for Lamar. Well, Cincinnati on the road next week. I think Jalen Hurts has probably got a better week coming up for himself yeah, against he Minnesota. Does. Justin Fields, honestly, this was this was a game that made me wonder if he's Gonna be it. Yeah. This is his twenty eighth start as a professional quarterback. You you traded your first pick overall. Look, don't forget this. I mean, like, it wasn't just for DJ Moore, but it was DJ Moore was part of the package. And DJ Moore was irrelevant. Like I said, thirty seven pass attempts. Three of thirty seven went over ten yards. Those aren't even pass attempts. Those should be called shuffle pass attempts. <laughs> That's a, It's an embarrassment from a game plan perspective. It was very interesting. I mean, this this was not good. And then they go to Tampa, who won this past week. I, I'm not that – I is this a concern? How concerned were you with Justin Fields? I, so the the fact that he had nine for 59 on the ground, that's that that still gives you hope and optimism. The – it – it felt like a regression, though. This was not the Justin Fields evolution that you would hope to see. Hoping they look at the film and go, "How do we? How are we getting DJ Moore just two targets? Like that's that is an embarrassment, and we need to we need to overcorrect. Like DJ Moore should see ten targets next week. Justin Fields, 
if you remember the final three games of last year, 152 passing yards, 119 passing yards, 75 passing yards. Mm-hmm. Um, you're not going to get – you can't predict a, a, a long of – uh, you know, 60-yard touchdown run, 67-yard touchdown run, 61-yard touchdown run. You can't get that every week. If no. you don't take the mature, you know, the step forward like Jalen Hurts did, this is going to be a bad pick. Yeah, he has to improve in the passing game. If that doesn't happen, then he could still be good for fantasy. We saw that last year. Uh, the The one thing that gives me comfort is another thing we saw last year was the Bears and the Bears offense and Justin Fields were putrid to start the year, and they they self-evaluated. They made wholesale changes to what was working and what wasn't working, and then obviously he went nuclear for the second half of last year. So I still think they're figuring out this new offense. They went from a team they, – they almost overcorrected in the sense that last year – they, he never threw it short. He never dinked and dunked. He didn't you have a screen game at all. Everything was chuck it deep or run. And so now it's like, well, we've got to correct that. And they've overcorrected. I think they will balance out. I just hope it happens quickly. 11th straight loss for the Bears. Dak Prescott, 13 for 24. Oh, didn't need, didn't leave need Dak to play alone. offense. It, this, this could be a problem. Yeah, if, that's that defense, a if that defense is as good, yep. I mean, and, and it wasn't just the Giants, you know, self imploding and making so many. Uh, horrific mistakes upon you know their the, you know they 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 added to the cause but if Dallas's defense is supreme and they could be they certainly looked at week one that's going to put Dak in situations where he doesn't need to throw the ball a lot and that's not his fault but for fantasy football six points that ain't gonna work yep and Geno Smith what a what a <laughs> maybe the the worst yes performance yes. of the week compared to expectations yes when you factor in the excitement of last year, the addition of Jackson Smith and Jigba, and the matchup against the Rams to have 112 passing yards is incredibly disheartening. Uh, Najee Harris, 6 for 31 on the ground. That's yeah. not good. I mean, 6 for 31 is is good, but 6 it's carries efficient. is... Yeah, just that he did have... Uh, Jalen Warren had 6 targets, Najee had 2. So you were bummed they, out there. DeAndre Swift, not used. Nope. He had 19 snaps. Kenny Gainwell had 41 snaps. We didn't talk about him in the studs because he didn't quite reach that level, but he was their guy exclusively. Rashad yes. Penny was out. Yeah, healthy, healthy scratch. scratch. Very interesting. Gainwell could be a massive draft day value. Damian Pierce, uh, as Jason proje projected, stifled by Baltimore. I mean, this is going to be – if C.J. Stroud doesn't – do enough in this offense, teams will definitely stop. Uh, it'll be focused on Damian Pierce. Mm -hmm. He also only had 48% of snaps because of the negative game script. You saw Mike Boone <laughs> out on the field. What What are you doing? So that that's a little bit concerning to me. It's, yeah, it should be. Jamal Williams didn't really look great on the ground, 18 no. for 45. He is who he we thought he was, and without a touchdown, he is who we thought he was. It did look like a better matchup, and they didn't do a lot against Tennessee. Tennessee had the worst performance. He won't come up because no one drafts him. Ryan Tannehill was oh, maybe oh, he was maybe Good. the worst player in football this week, and they almost won. They lost by a point and had yeah. a chance to win at the end of the game, and every single play that Tannehill had the ball, that it was a pass play, it looked like old Matt Ryan. He was so slow, and this is a guy who's always had great pocket movement, great scrambling ability, his just just his passes like you would load gross. up the pass yes and it looked like it took him twice as long to lift that ball and throw it as it usually did I don't know what's going on but um that's bad vibes from the quarterback play and I need and, to get banana rama in there <laughs> I don't know if they can all right and we talked about Rashad White and Antonio Gibson but they were really disappointing Antonio Gibson we need to you know hang in there for a week or two but uh not good no on the wide receiver position oh in that Gibson game, Andy, you had the almost upset oh, yeah, nailed, yeah, yeah. which seemed ludicrous. Yes. Absolute lunacy to pick the Cardinals there as an almost upset. And they, they had the ball with a chance to win at the very end of the game, and we were all petrified. We were like, don't you do it. Don't you do this, Cardinals. You need to take this loss. Take the almost seriously, Arizona. Yeah. No, absolutely. And did there, do you guys, did you feel like you could – extract anything from that matchup of it is Arizona's defense 
going to be slightly better than projected. The offense, they were not winning on the offensive side of the football. They no, were the, the they offense were, didn't score a touchdown. They were the pass rush terrible. was better than advertised. What six sacks? Six sacks. They scored a defensive touchdown. But I'm saying, is that a Cardinals thing or is that a Sam Howell Washington Commanders thing? Yeah, it's one of those week one. You've got to put those. You know those two questions in your pocket. And you have to remember to pay attention this next week. How does Arizona play? How does Washington play? Um, the truth is usually in the middle, and it's you know it's like we said earlier. It's like a both and situation. But the Cardinals defense might not be one that is so easily exploitable as what was presumed. All right, looking at wide receivers, we did have a couple guys give us uh, some sound bites from the weekend: Drake London, T. Higgins. <laughs> Look, it's one thing to go. Oh, uh, did I hit it again? Well, That's, two guys. Yeah. So. It's one it's one thing to um to only be targeted once and not have a catch. Drake London. Yeah, which of these is worse? What's particularly egregious is eight targets for T. Higgins. I need to go back and watch them because many of these I'm 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 gonna guess there's there's some of these that have Joe Burrow passes that they call the target. But it, I mean, the guy, is that an insult to targets everywhere? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you had passes where it's like the the ball didn't get past the line of scrimmage. I mean, yeah. weird. Speaking weird, of weird, tiny hand stuff. Targets. <laughs> These hands. <laughs> Speaking of targets, you go and you target T. Higgins right now because you're not getting Joe Burrow. Like you, you can go trade for Joe Burrow or whatever. You had a bad week one, maybe. Two up for Burrow. Go. Yeah, sure. I mean, you can offer him, but I doubt you get Joe Burrow from a manager. But you can get T. Higgins because possible. T, T. Higgins was someone you're you're always a little worried about. Now they didn't pay him. Now he comes out week one, and if you didn't re realize he got eight targets and he just complete gooses, I would. I, I have no fears zero fears of t higgins being bad this season i agree with you and uh the the balls i saw were oh, man were Comical. side where they were sideline throws in the rain way out of reach up the sideline um mike williams big dead four for 45 he missed he, he missed a game. good chunk yeah. of that game he uh tyler lockett went out with a concussion but that was pretty late mike williams missed uh i i was shocked when he came back in that game uh, but he was gone for quite a while. DJ Moore had a 5% target share. Two targets, two for 25. What you do in Chicago? It won't work. Correct it. Uh, Amari Cooper, three for 37. He missed some of the game, too. Came out for a minute. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was part of that rain ball game. I'd target him, too. Yeah, I, 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 to I don't mind it at all. I don't mind targeting him. That that game was uh, a mess weather-wise. Wouldn't target Christian Kirk. Mm -hmm. One for nine. Uh, Terry McLaurin was just two for 31 coming off of the, the injury. The toe. Drew a couple pass interference penalties that don't show up in the stat sheet. Deep deep shots from Hal. Mm -hmm. George Pickens, 5 for 36. He was grimacing, grumbling on the sideline yet again. Yeah, but he becomes more interesting as Deontay Johnson will be out a while. Hollywood Brown, 3 for 28. The Cardinals just, I mean, you don't want that offense. No. Uh, it was part of the early part of the offseason. We were like, okay, Hollywood Brown could probably get it done with Colt McCoy. And then you'll get back Kyler. But then about three-quarters of the way through the offseason, we all <laughs> threw up the red alert sign on all these options. Yeah, Juju, uh, four for 33. Ball was distributed everywhere. He was also the third man up. Yeah. I mean, K Kendrick Bourne had a huge day. Oh, and I think I think Booty was playing in front of Juju. Yeah, and Booty was uh, one toe away from saving the day. They had a chance to win it. And then we talked about it. Dallas Goddard. <laughs> I mean, what just do you do? Just, just forget about this game and move on with Goddard. You draft him to be your tight end every week. Yeah, you're you're going to keep starting him. Uh, tight ends have bad games, but this one was especially strange because the Eagles' offense was really struggling. I, mean, I they, told everyone, start Blake Bell they, over Goddard. They I couldn't mean, just... find their rhythm against the Patriots. Something wasn't working, and the fact that they never went to Dallas Goddard when – what they were doing wasn't working, and he was out there running routes. I I really didn't understand it. Well, it was a uh, you know, it wasn't good for the tight end position. Yeah. George Kittle three for nineteen, Darren Waller three for thirty six, uh, Kyle yeah. Pitts two for forty four, Isaiah Likely one for four, unlikely to be started again by anybody. <laughs> he was one for four on like the second <laughs> pass of the game. It was like the, the game starts. People are excited about Isaiah Likely. They picked him up. They put him in there first. You know, second play. It's like, oh yeah, he's totally involved. I think Never again. Here, here's the here's the uh, glass half full perspective on the tight end position. 
You didn't get hurt. No. I don't care. It don't matter who you played. Yeah. You weren't. Well, no one was playing Hunter Henry against you. It yeah. hurts if you invested draft capital. Yes. That's sure. where it hurts. Sure. But I mean, you didn't. At least the player that you invested draft capital for, for you weren't outmatched at the position. I had to pivot from Kelsey into Sam Laporta, and he outscored Jake Ferguson, who should be in the duds, uh, sure. six to two. Yeah. That wasn't what defined our match, Jason. No, Jake Ferguson certainly is worth talking about. He had two total catches for 11 yards, but he did it on seven targets. So you've got this uh, dichotomy where you're going, well, is he just not good? Because he was out there, the opportunity was there, the targets were there. He had, he had a couple dr drops. Yeah, he had some ugly drops. Maybe he just isn't good enough. That is a legit outcome here where it's like he's oh, – yeah. Are you talking about a school, school, school man? Yeah, come together. Um, <laughs> or you could say, or this or, is a or really an good, opportunity. This is a really good guy to target. They didn't really need to throw the ball much as the game went on. He had seven targets, was that's, clearly involved in the offense. So for me personally, I lean that direction. Yeah, I'm too. not going to move on from Jake Ferguson. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I will. I, I lean that direction too because Dak will not throw for a hundred and something yards every week. But but maybe he will because that defense, that defense is was something fierce, something impressive. You know who does okay. Dallas have next week? I'm sure uh, we have that a, in here. It's a good question. Why uh, you look that up? Oh, the Jets. Okay, that'll so, be fun. That will be. I'm gonna go sit them all down. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be really interesting. Another interesting thing we I, we just talked about two different teams where we're saying were the Cowboys defense that good. Or was it that the Giants' offense was that bad? And same with, is the Cardinals' offense actually good? Or was the no, Washington... the defense. Uh, yeah, the, the defense yeah. that good? Or was the Washington offense that bad? And now, so you got the bad Giants and the questionable good Cardinals. And guess who play each other next week? The Giants and the Cardinals. Oh, so we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get an answer as to like, okay. Uh, although, if the Cardinals actually shut down the Giants... <laughs> Is it both? Should I hit the almost upset already? <laughs> no. No. All right. We are uh, done with today's episode. We got the waiver show tomorrow. Do not miss it. Also, pick up our in-season app. Go to the App Store, the Google Play Store. Type in the Fantasy Footballers. It's a free app. It's got news, start sit tool, rankings, all the free resources. Or podcasts. Yeah, the podcasts are in there. So uh, it's new this year. Shout out to our dev team for getting that out in time for the season. And uh, well, you We can name them by name. Computer Camp. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, uh, look, there, there are no Rons in there. Let's just put it that <laughs> no. way. And uh, leave us a five star review if you enjoy the podcast. It helps us out a lot. That is it. We're done. Waiver show tomorrow. Don't miss it. It's going to be a fun one. Hotly debated names. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.